Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Little Farm Homestead. My name is Amber, and today I'm going to be raw packing um, a beef roast that we've had in the freezer for a while. Um, it's from Costco, and I probably picked it up, I don't know, sometime in November. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, can it today so that it'll be ready to go for use, um, immediate use. I won't have to worry about cooking it. It'll be all cooked and ready to go for the for our family. I'm going to be using um, pint jars and- um, I meant quart jars, I not pints. For our family of five, this will work perfectly for one meal. And it's a good size roast. So I think I'll be able to probably get four, maybe five. I do have one, um, I mean, not pint jars, quart jars. And I have one pint jar that I'm going to be using um, if we get that far, so I don't know. So we're gonna use about five quarts and one pint in the event we have enough for it. Um, but I'm kind of thinking probably not, and I'll just take you guys along for the ride. All right, so um, here I'm just unpacking the meat. I had it sitting um, out yesterday to thaw, and I didn't get to it, and I decided to go ahead, put it back in the fridge, and let it thaw out. And so um, it did finally thaw that it was still kind of a little bit frozen in the middle, which was fine. It did allow it to be much easier to cut. And um, I was able to get through a lot of it um, pretty quickly and just kind of getting ready, um, getting everything set up and um, throw away all the packaging and whatnot. I've got um, an audiobook playing in the background. So I usually like to listen to audiobooks whenever um, I'm doing things around the house like this, just so that I have something, I don't know, something going on double duty, you know, multitask. But my sister's really into true crime and she's super, um, super into it to where she has like a, her own YouTube channel and she does all these true crime mysteries and stuff in her area, which is pretty cool. All right now I'm just kind of trimming the fat. Um, I mean, there's a great marbling through the whole thing. It's going to have fat and you'll see later on in the video that whenever it is all done canning there is a nice layer of fat at the top and and so it's all good one thing that i really wish that i had done um with this that i forgot to do was season the meat i was going to put some garlic and a little bit of salt and pepper and i totally forgot it's fine it's all fine um this meat is totally plain and unflavored and I can just flavor it whenever I go to um, serve it and heat it up. I can season it then. Um, no big deal. I just wanted to just kind of skip that step and have the meat um, canned and infused with the garlic and salt and pepper and just really have this robust flavor. And I forgot to do it. It's fine. This is actually my first time to raw pack um, any kind of meat. I have canned ground beef before, but I always um, kind of pre-cook it. And so I'm getting ready to pack my first um, jar. And I noticed there was some like lint or something that had fallen in it while it was just sitting out on the counter, I guess. So I just went ahead and rinsed it out. But these are all clean um, and I'm doing you know, cold meat and regular cold room temperature jars. The canner is going to be cold. The water in the canner is going to be all cold too. So it's going to all be cold, 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 cold. So um, just have everything match up. So I'm filling this up. I'm going to leave an inch, <clears throat> like an inch and a half, inch and a quarter inch space of headroom. And I'll move things around here soon to 
reflect that, but I'm trying to get it packed in there without being super jammed. I just want to make sure I have enough room for everything. And when it does go in the canner, it will cook and it'll cook down. So I'm going to have it packed all the way up. But when it is done um, in the canner and the meat is all cooked and tender and delicious, it will be significantly lower in the jar and that's fine that's you know what you want it's it'll have plenty of space when it's all done i've got baby jacob in here with me i don't know if you can hear him but he is playing at my feet and um it is a couple of days after this and it's actually right before i need to go and pick up emerson from school so we're gonna move on to the next jar and I think I um, probably would have been smart to go ahead and um, cut all of this before I start packing it in the jars but I was impatient I was ready to get it in there and it only filled four quarts um, I was thinking maybe it might do more than that but it filled four and that was fine it was plenty that was four delicious meals for our family and I am happy with that I could have also pre-trimmed this meat instead of trimming each um, section that I cut off but I mean it was whatever it was fine I was really impatient to get started You guys see all of that fat and all of that that I put to the side. All these trimmings did not go to waste. Um, our dogs, Bailey and Stella, enjoyed those little bits. Um, they were super excited. But um, we could have given them to the chickens or whatever. But we just went ahead and gave them to the girls, Bailey and Stella. So they weren't gone to waste. All right, so we're almost done with this one, with this jar. I think there's only like one or two left, but I went ahead and trimmed the meat um, before I started cutting this so that there's just some of the 
cuts were like really thick on the on the fat and I don't want to cook extra fat there's plenty on there so I'm just kind of trimmed it up and moving on along to the next jar and um, I'm trying to keep the chunks pretty big at least an inch inch and a half some of them are a little bigger than that but um, you know good size um, I don't want to do anything too small <clears throat> and um, have issues with the um, preservation of the meat and anything like that so just kind of keep the pieces bigger and it works out better Okay, so here I'm just cleaning off the rims of the jars with some vinegar on paper towel. Just checking for any chips or cracks or anything like that and um, getting anything that might be on the rim of the jar just to make sure we have a nice um, tight seal with the lids. Um, if there's anything on the rim of the jars up there that could cause um, your jars not to seal properly and so we want to avoid that so we make sure it's nice and clean up there. So um, now that the rims are all clean and all that jazz, I'm going to be using four jars, canning lids, and rings. I am new to canning um, and definitely new to pressure canning. Actually, pressure canning is the only canning I've done so far. And um, I have only ever used four jars canning lids and I love them. I have heard nothing but fantastic things about them and I have been very impressed. Obviously, I have nothing to compare it to, but I just have such peace of mind with these jars and these can or with these canning lids and rings. All right, so I'm ready to put my jars in. I'm using four jar canning lids. Um, these are wide mouth uh, jars that I'm going to be using and I'm using an all American canner with 10 pounds of pressure for um, our area, which is Southeast Texas. So um, 10 pounds of pressure. I've got my water in the bottom already and um, I'm just doing cold canner, cold meat, cold jars, cold water, just all the things all match up together. We're gonna do this for 90 minutes because we are doing quart size uh, jars uh, for meat. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna, I usually always grease this. Um, I think you could probably do it like every other, but I do mine every time. That's just uh, what I like to do. And then whenever I put the lid on, I gotta make sure this is all even. So I'll do that now. Okay. And then there 
is an arrow and an arrow notched in. So I'm going to turn this and line that up. <clears throat> I'm just gonna use my fingertips to make sure everything is equal on all sides. And then put the, I don't know, whatever these are. All right, now we're just gonna turn it on high heat and <clears throat> wait for the steam to come out on this little guy. Um, and then we'll, um, once the steam comes up, we'll let it go for 10 minutes. And then we will drop our weight on 10 pounds on here and regulate our temperature so that our gauge stays at 10 pounds and our, and this will jiggle, but um, I use the gauge for it just to kind of make sure we're in our good range and just maintain for the whole 90 minutes. this depressurize um, and just leave everything as is and once this drops down to zero just all by its lonesome I'll go ahead and take this little guy off and um, and then I will go ahead and unscrew all these and take off the top and just kind of let it sit usually I just let it sit for a while um, you know, and then I'll come over here and, and take it off. That way everything starts to kind of cool down. I will kind of release these and crack it just so the steam will come on out and then I'll open it up away from my face and all that good stuff. But that is it. Once that's all done, I'll go ahead and uh, take the jars out and put them on the counter. Um, until tomorrow and then I will uh, put them away. Take the rings off and put them away. It's hot, don't touch it. All right, well, we'll see you. We'll see you when it's time to take everything out. All right, so my parents had stopped by um, this day and so you'll probably see or hear my mom here in a minute, but um, I visited with them for about, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes while it was depressurizing and the time has come, it's down to zero and I'm getting these, um, what are these things called? These little attacher bits on the side that hold it down. Anyway, um, I only hand tighten them, but it is so, they're so, I, you know, you have to have like brute strength to undo them afterwards. I don't know if like the canning process gets them tighter or if it's like the pressure or what but I always have to get like a oven mitt or something to give me better grip strength to um get them unlatched I mean they they everything opens up just fine like there's no issue but getting them um to loosen those little black latch things to loosen enough to um to where I can go ahead and unscrew them. It's like once I once I get a little twist, I can get it off by hand, no problem. But I don't know if anybody knows like why it does that or how to stop that. That would be so helpful because, or maybe I just have the weakest hands of all time. I don't know. But anyways, um, 
I got them off and pulled the top off away from my face. There really wasn't much steam because it had been sitting there for a little while anyway. Okay. All right, guys. So earlier today, after my canner kind of cooled down a little bit, I went ahead and pulled our um, our roast that we can together and um, just kind of letting them sit over here in the corner to cool down and whatnot. And then tomorrow I'll go ahead and take the rings off. And, um, but yeah, we got four um, quarts out of that one big roast. And I feel like that's a win. This is quick, easy dinners for us. And I did not season these at all. These are just straight. Typically I do like to, but honestly, I forgot all about doing it. I would have put some, uh, minced garlic in here uh, and maybe a little salt and pepper just to give it some flavor. I do like typically for my uh, canned meat to uh, be canned with some flavoring just because I feel like it enriches the um, the meat <clears throat> and um, allows it to infuse, especially with the garlic, but I forgot about it and it is what it is. That's okay. It is going to be delicious to be seasoned afterwards. And I feel like this will be perfect for each one of these will be a perfect uh, meal for our family of five um, to go on, you know, whatever we choose to put it on for our dinners. And um, yeah, so this is four quick, easy meals for me and my family. Whenever I can, I really try to can things always can things that we a eat and b i try to do things like this because it's convenient and it's a convenience meal versus having to wait for something pull it out of the freezer and thaw this one i can pull it off my shelf and go and it's cooked and all i have to do is heat it up flavor it how we want and serve it how we want and for me convenience is key when canning um and so that's why, in large part, why, why I do this. Not just to preserve our food. Of course, I want to preserve our food. Um, and that does help to have it shelf-stable. So that if we do have a power outage, I don't have to worry about all the meat in the freezer. I've got it on my shelves. But secondly, for the convenience factor, that it is ready to go for me to whip out a quick meal hey for guys, our family. Hey, guys. So uh, that was obviously filmed a few days ago, but... I want to do a closing video because I didn't do one before and just thank you so much for stopping by to the channel and um, raw packing beef and canning it with me for the first time. We did that together and that was fun. I hope to do more things like that in future. Um, and if you want to see more things that are going on here at the homestead and whatnot, just come on anytime. We'll always be here and give us a subscribe. And we'll be so happy to have you. Thanks so much. Bye.